Hello, my name is Winston Shaw Cortez. I'm a postdoc at KTH Rural Institute of Technology. I'll be presenting work co-authored by myself and Professor Dimos de Marogonas, titled Correct by Design Control Barrier Functions for Oil of the Ground Systems with Input Constraints. So here we're looking at oil of the ground systems and we want to ensure safety. So one motivation behind this work is the idea of human and robots cooperating. So here human and a robot are in the same workspace to help accomplish a task and obviously what we want to do is ensure that safety is ensured. We don't want the robot to accidentally harm the human um, but also you can also think of human robot cooperation in the human loop type of situation where the human wants to control the robot and we're not sure what the human input is going to be. It could have some input that causes damage to the equipment or possibly harming other humans in the process. So we want to ensure safety in this kind of scenario but we also acknowledge real life limitations of oil of the ground systems in that there is no infinite actuation in real life. So we want to ensure safety of the system subject to actuator authority. Uh, so some previous work has looked at um, how to ensure safety for oil of the ground systems. We focus specifically on control barrier function methods. Um, one of which is the sum of squares programming, uh, SOS programming, which is restricted to polynomial systems, which does not represent oil of the ground systems. Uh, another more recent approach is uh, defining an evasive maneuver for um, the, bar the control barrier functions. However, it's, this is dependent on knowing what an evasive maneuver should be a priori, which is not straightforward for a general oil of the ground system. So in this work, we're gonna look on the design of control barrier functions for oil of the ground systems, where we have an explicit design formulation that's not dependent on the existence of some other function. And we'll look at multiple position velocity and actuator constraints that must be uh, satisfied simultaneously. So to get into the problem formulation, we have our conventional oil Lagrange dynamics. We have the generalized position coordinates Q, generalized velocities V. We have the acceleration of the system that's dependent on the inertia matrix M, the Coriolis matrix C, this F is the damping matrix. We have a gravity torque G, and finally our control input here, which are the torques that we can apply on the system. Just going to list a few main properties, uh, well known properties of oil electron systems, mainly that uh, the, inertia matrix is, the inertia matrix is symmetric, positive, definite, and bounded, that the Coriolis matrix is bounded as a function of the velocity, and that the gravity torque is also bounded. So these bounds will be used throughout the results. Okay, so now we can get to the problem statement. So, given some oil electron system, we're going to look at position, velocity, and input constraints of these forms. So these are box constraints on each of our position velocities and inputs. For simplicity, we're gonna say that V max is minus V min, and U max is minus U min, just for the, to clarify the presentation. So the problem that we want to address is how to design a control law that respects our actuator constraints, but also renders these sets, the state constraint sets, C and D, forward and variant. Now, what I mean by forward invariant is that if a state starts in this set, they remain in this set for all time. So basically, safety is ensured for all time. So to present our approach, we're going to have to first have a little background on control barrier functions. Um, conventionally, define a constraint set in this form. So C is our constraint set, and it's the set of all states such that some continuously differentiable function H is non um, in this case, we look at nonlinear affine dynamics. Um, we consider a zeroing control barrier function, ZCBF, which is defined here. H, the function that defines a constraint set, is a ZCBF if there exists an extended class K function alpha, such that this condition holds. So this is a Lyapunov-like condition, saying that H dot is going to be equal to minus alpha H. However, it's less restrictive because it doesn't require negative definiteness, or in this case, positive definiteness of H dot. In fact, H dot can be decreasing, but as the system approaches the boundary where H is equal to zero, then H dot must be non-negative. So if H is ZCBF, then we can ensure forward invariance of our constraint set by enforcing this H dot condition, which I'll, talk, I'll, I'll refer to as a ZCBF condition. And the way this is done conventionally is by um, incorporating this into a quadratic program. So we define our U star in this, in this format where we want to minimize u with some u nom. u nom is an, any nominal locally Lipschitz control law. This could be a stabilizing controller or this could be a human input to the system. Um, but it's subject to the constraint that h dot 
this lead derivative of h um, respect to the dynamics represents h dot on the left is greater than or equal to minus alpha of h. So we're prioritizing safety or constraint satisfaction of the whole system. So what we're going to try to do is do that same approach here, but we already run into some issues. Our constraint set has multiple constraints defined by, being defined by these box constraints. So what we do is we break these down into individual h sub i uh, bar and lower bar. So these uh, represent the upper and lower bounds on h for some i constraint of the uh, representing the uh, vector in the vector bounds from our constraint set. We define c sub i. So this is basically the the bounds where h sub i are both upper and lower bound uh, bar are non-negative. So for a picture, so you're trying to get, understand what's happening, you can look to the example on the right. So here we have the upper and lower bounds on Q, defined these by these black dashed lines. And so C is the area between these, um, these lines, these upper and lower bounds. So to implement the control barrier function approach, we're gonna go through a backstepping technique. Because as we try to do the ZZBF condition, we realize that when we take the derivative of H, we don't have any control input here. We just have velocity and, and uh, position constraints. We can't enforce these. So what we have to do is um, define a new function, which we, I will refer to as the candidate control barrier functions, where we simply rewrite these conditions in another, uh, into another for, uh, function. So this BI, upper and lower bar, uh, we simply added alpha to the left-hand side of both cases. And what we want is both of these functions to now be non-negative, because that means that, oops, sorry, that means that the ZZBF condition here is satisfied, which means we get for an invariance of this set, CI. So what we do is now we define the set BI, which is where both of these control, candidate control barrier functions are non-negative. Again, it might be better to look at the picture to the right. So the set CI, as I said, was between these black dashed lines. The set BI is the gray area that's bounded by the dashed blue line. And so what we really want to check is the safe set, which is the intersection of both of these, denoted by CI, partition product with the, the real uh, line, intersected with this BI. And so that's the bounds defined by the black lines and the dashed blue lines here. Notice that this is a compact set that we will be looking over. And one more thing to point out is I've included a design parameter into the control barrier function condition, in the control barrier functions in themselves. And this will be used to help design the control barrier functions. So we have our candidate control barrier functions, BIs, but uh, we still need to go through the ZCBF condition. So we differentiate, we set it equal to, uh, sorry, greater than equal to some other extended class K function of our barrier function. Um, and assuming that this holds, we can then concatenate these for all I, for all the constraints that we have into a quadratic program similar to the one used um, in the conventional approaches. Um, but we also have another design parameter we've included in the ZCBF condition. And so the idea here is that we're going to design gamma and beta, these design parameters we've included in our construction of the ZCBFs, so that we always have a solution to U star. And this is really the problem that we're solving here. So first off, if we look back to, our, to this set that I introduced before, we wanna see how does gamma affect this system? And in fact, as you increase gamma, you're actually increasing the amount of velocity that you can have in the system. And this holds for, so this picture is for uh, this class of, this type of extended class K function, which is the arp tangent of H, but this applies to any extended class K, linear, cubic, what have you. And so the nice thing here is that we basically have a tuning parameter to dictate what the velocity of the system is. So a straightforward lemma is in that the upper bounds on our velocity is actually proportional to gamma and some constant. This constant A is simply a function of the min and max um, position constraints of the system. So it's fixed given a priori. So with that, we know we can satisfy the velocity constraints. Now, what about the input constraints? So to do this, we have a main assumption. Um, and to introduce the assumption, I need to find a new term, this u tilde of min. So you can think of this as, as u min of i, but it's a bit more uh, restrictive. What we're actually saying is we're in including all of the possible maximum to torques that any other joint could implement that affects the current joint. So here's joint I, and we have the summation of all po other joints at their maximum values multiplied by the bounds from our Euler-Lagrange dynamics. 
So another way to think about this is an independent joint condition, because what the assumption is saying is that both these terms, u min tilde, u max tilde, are negative, definite, and positive, uh, strictly negative and strictly positive, respectively, where u max tilde here is just the negative of u min tilde. So what we're really saying is that there is enough control authority in the system so that given some joint i, if any of the other joints could be collectively are at their maximum values, there is still sufficient authority for joint i to satisfy its constraints. And that is how, this is the, a conservative assumption, but it lets us write the barrier functions in a closed form type of format. And so with this, we can then go to lemma three, where we use these bounds, so these km2, km1, kg, these are the bounds of our oil of the Grange systems. Uh, and with these, we can show that there exists, by construction, um, functions psi of i, uh, upper and lower bar, such that if these conditions are satisfied, so psi i minus beta of alpha 2 is uh, non-positive, and psi i lower bar minus beta of alpha 2 is non-positive, then there exists a u satisfying our input constraint, so that our ZCVF conditions hold. So basically, we've converted the problem to checking this condition to now checking this condition. So you can think of these CI term, psi i terms as bounds on our um, derivatives of our control barrier functions. So we have this result, and how do we use it? So if we want to enforce these conditions, a naive way to approach this is to simply try to solve for beta. So we add it to the, the opposite, to the other side of the equation, divide by alpha 2 of b, and we define our beta star. So this is going to be a lower bound on beta. Um, and we simply look at the maximum of all the possible psi i over alpha 2 of b, the control error functions over the entire set, over all the constraints. But uh, this is not well defined because b, as we define our, our set, is zero at the boundary. So basically this explodes. So we don't have a well-defined lower bound on our design parameter. But there's something we can do. In fact, if we investigate the case where uh, bi is equal to zero, which is the boundary of our set, um, we can actually then set psi i equal to zero. And what we want to do is actually force psi i to be strictly negative. And what this does is um, ensures that this term, uh, both of these terms, go to negative infinity at the boundary so that the upper bound is well defined. Um, so here we investigate when psi i is equal to zero to then ensure that we can define these functions phi bar and lower bar to lower sorry to upper bound or gamma star. So the intuition here is gamma again dictates the velocity of the system. We're basically restricting how fast we can approach the boundary so that we always have a control input to satisfy our constraints. It's basically the, the intuition here. Okay, so with that we can state our main result. If we have uh, gamma satisfying these conditions, it's less than gamma star, but it's also less than um, the maximum velocity of the system, and beta is lower bounded by beta star, then there exists a u satisfying our control inputs to render our safe set here, forward invariant. And then we can show, of course, that the safe set is just a subset of our constraint set. We call that these are the constraint sets here, the box constraints for the position of this in input. So for a quick uh, proof, as we kind of built um, up to this point, we know that by ensuring gamma is less than gamma star, B star, beta star is well defined, return that beta is greater than or equal to beta star. Then we have our lemma three that says that there exists a U such that our ZCPF condition holds, and this holds for all constraints. So now we know that there exists a U such that our safe set is for invariant. And furthermore, since we've restricted gamma based on the maximum velocity of the system, we know that our velocity constraints will be satisfied, um, which means that the safe set that we know is forward invariant is in fact a subset of the desired position and velocity constraints. So for some simulation results, here we have a two degree of freedom manipulator. We have our control, uh, the ZBF control law that I've defined before, and we're gonna implement some nominal control that's a computed torque. And the idea here is we're gonna create a reference that represents a human that's incorrectly operating the machines but tries to take the system outside of the safe sets. So how do we do this? Uh, we have a design approach. So we first have to choose these extended class k functions. Here, for example, we have the arc tangent of h um, for alpha one and the cubic function for alpha two. Given this, we then can compute our design parameters. So we 
the plot functions p bar and lower bar here, we can find a lower bar of gamma star. So we choose gamma less than gamma star, we then check the velocity bounds of the system. Indeed, the, the maximum velocity is satisfied. And then we can go to the uh, beta star computation. So one thing I want to um, emphasize here is these are conditions we check for each joint independently. You don't have to check for the overall system. So if we have more than, so as we increase the size of the oil Lagrange system, it doesn't uh, drastically increase the computational load of, of solving for these design parameters. We only have to check to reach the joint independently, which is helpful. So when we have our, our functions, we can plot the, um, what this psi i over alpha two of beta of b is for the um, design parameter condition, choose our beta to be greater than or equal to this beta star. And then straightforward, we can just implement our controller. And what we see here is that the black dashed lines uh, represent the constraints, position, velocity, and input constraints of the overall system for joints one and two. The red line, the red dashed line represents the trajectories associated with the nominal control alone. So of course you see that it violates every single constraint that we've imposed, but when we include the control barrier function control law, we see that we have satisfied, uh, by the blue trajectory, we see that we satisfy all the constraints of the system. So to conclude, we have presented the correct by design method um, for de designing control barrier functions to ensure safety of oil of the ground systems. We address multiple control barrier functions here considered as box constraints, and we ensure position velocity and constraints are that always satisfied at the same time. Future work, uh, we plan to submit this relatively soon, is to incorporate robustness margins and sampling times to um, address implementation of the control law. Also relaxation of assumption one for reduced conservativeness and extensions to more general constraint types. With that, I'll conclude my talk and take any questions. Thank you.